Hi, I've got Gert Leonhardt here today. Gert, what I'd like to ask you is, you know, where do you see journalism going, and particularly mobile journalism in the future with the changes in technology we're seeing today? Yeah, as far as uh, mobile is concerned, I don't really make much of a difference there because mobile is the future, period. Right? I mean, basically, the way we use mobile is becoming the mainstream of how we do anything, whether it's e-commerce or buying or, or maps or, or, or reading things. Right? And as we connect the mobile to our wearables and to our eyeglasses and our iris, you know, then basically becomes the default. Right? And so journalism to me really is about the question about what is human, humanly meaningful because uh, generating content in a sort of algorithmic way is what Google News does mm -hmm. uh, and what Facebook does, you know, with 10 editors. Huh? But to make it really meaningful and specific and personalized uh, and also balanced, I think that takes another skill. So to me, journalism has a bright future. The business model of journalism, there will be a lot of changes. Now, in terms of changes and journalism in the future, do you think social media will play a big part in terms of, you know, collating all of that information out there and channeling it to different audiences? Yeah, I think the term social media is kind of, I'd like to get rid of it, just like big data. So, you know, they, they become like headlines, you know, really all media is social and now mobile is interactive. And, and I call this uh, difference between broadcasting and broadbanding, uh, what I call broadbanding, is that in broadband we can go both ways. Right? And so the future is about broadbanding, and broadcasters become a part of that broadband uh, broadcasting uh, broadbanding scenario. Right? So in that context, basically, uh, the business models would have to adapt. But to me, that is not going to be a permanent problem; it's just a temporary issue. So in terms of that broadbanding you mentioned and that two-way path and connection, you think it's going to bring more members of the public into the sort of journalism field, the storytelling field? Well, in general, I, f I think that uh, the means of production are getting much cheaper, right? It doesn't mean everybody's a producer. Uh, it takes a lot to be a good producer. I mean, people who have tried to write a meaningful blog would know. And people who made a record as a musician, it's a little bit different in different disciplines because a musician is such a relative term, right? But uh, journalism is, has very particular challenges, and, and you can't just go and, and do it in five minutes, you know? Uh, I think what we see there is a return of this kind of expertship of curation, of value, of meaning, uh, rather than noise. You know, because in the end, you know, in five years there'll be so much noise that if you open the floodgates, you're dead. Right? So, uh, and social media generates that in a good way. Right? Uh, so curation becomes a, a very big job, and people will pay for curation, people will pay for meaning, people will pay for personalization, and for for uh, for value, right? just like they pay for Netflix rather than using you know, popcorn time or whatever. Right? So you mentioned curation and people willing to pay money for that. Um, do you think that there are elements of technology now that could be used to sort of train people and upgrade their skills so that they can be more informed to make those decisions for curation? Yeah, I think it's kind of a natural, you know, it's a paradox of choice that we have encountered on the web, you know, for the last 10 years. And now it's quite clear that having more choice doesn't necessarily mean a better quality or a better experience. So people are now coming and saying, okay, I, I would pay to be private, for example, not have my data taken, I would pay for the experience, pay for the interface, like The Economist has an audio version that I like, so I pay for that, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and those are new models that are just now happening, right? So it's actually the, it's kind of the end of having to be free, just because it should be, uh, parenthesis, right? Now it's about value. It's really always been about value, but there was a time of confusion. So now we're entering, I call this the valley of death in media. You know, we've gone through the valley of death, we're coming out the other end, and we're seeing on top of the mountain you know, five billion people connecting to the, to the networks, mostly on mobile devices, and that's going to be fantastic for everybody that is a creator, provided that we can get on an evil level with the consumer. Now, you mentioned there's five billion people that are connected there. What are your thoughts on privacy? Well, I think that uh, the reality is, I think, if we, if we want to get everything for free and just use platforms that use us as their content, uh, then privacy there is unattainable, really. Because, you know, it's being perfected by mobile devices, by drones, by cameras, by face recognition, by artificial intelligence, by the IBM Watson, you name it, right? I mean, everybody's working hard on the erosion of anonymity and privacy <laughs> because it makes money. Uh, the flip side of that is if we want that to retain that, we're going to have to make a payment to opt out of those database models, you know, get out of the Faustian bargains. Uh, I think that's kind of a good way to describe how the internet has changed, has gone from this idea of being a free-for-all, flowing, you know, a grassroots, decentralized, whatever, right? 
And now it's going to be about creating value in the way that fits us rather than that fits the platform. Uh, and that's going to be very good, I think, for most media companies. But having said that, they do have to understand that this is the user who's calling the shots, the prices, the interface, the timing. Right? Like Spotify, you know, we, we can't force people to pay, to pay more just because the content providers, is, that's what they would like. Right? So that, that is the past. You know, we're going to have to figure out what is that sweet spot for that. And I, I think it's going to be in various ways of premiums, freemiums, and that combination. Excellent. Good. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Perfect.